Hey everyone, my name is Zach and I am with Rescue Rebuild. We are making another tool review video in partnership with Nailgun Depot. And today we're working in Missouri. I can't tell you where because we're working at a domestic violence shelter. And what we're doing here is creating a pet friendly space so that victims of domestic violence can bring their dogs and cats with them. Through Nailgun Depot, we've been provided with some awesome tools here that we're excited to try out. We've never used a collated screw gun before. Um, but to have one for drywall seems like it's going to be really handy. So uh, we are not professional drywallers. We've all done some drywall, but we've always done it with just a handful of screws and an impact driver or a drill. So this is a whole new world for us. So as we're getting used to these, we thought it'd be a fun trial here to do a little side-by-side -side comparison. We've got Matt back here, who's probably our fastest with doing screws by hand. And then I'm gonna use our Senko gun and we're gonna do four screws on two studs each and we'll see how long it takes. You ready, Matt? Yep. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Ah, I missed. All right, so about twice as fast, but I have two extra screws. <laughs> so it goes a lot faster, but speed is not always the name of the game with this, but I think that just goes to show um, these things are, are really helpful. Typically, if we're just using a loose screw, it's very easy to crack the edge out. And so we thought it was gonna be a disadvantage with these because you can't really angle the screws in too well. Uh, but what we're finding is you can get a lot closer to the edge with one of these screw guns uh, and not crack the drywall. So you can see here, I ran one with the impact driver and one with the quick drive system. Um, we'll show you a close up here. The impact driver cracked it and this one started to, but it really didn't. So um, nice, nice advantage to these setups. All right, so we've hung 18 sheets of drywall. We didn't do the ceilings or the bottom. You'll see why in a little bit when you see our finished product. Um, but we have a pretty good feel for these guns now that we've, we've used them quite a bit. Um, so I'm just gonna go through each one and just show some of the features, some of the good and bad that I've seen. The adjustment up here, which we had an inch and a quarter the whole time, um, came in handy for the few times that we had a jam or something just got a little stuck. They were always my fault. I'd push halfway and then push again and it would get stuck. But the great thing is you can adjust this to a longer length screw and then you can pull the whole thing through. Um, so we really didn't have any jams that couldn't be cleared quickly on this. The other feature of this is to change your bit, you spin this collar and the whole front comes off and you can see your bit is right in here. And then you've got this button up here to release it. Super simple, uh, it could not be easier. The only downside here is this is a bit specific to this driver. Uh, I looked quickly and these seem to run between seven and $10 depending on which one you're getting. Um, but with all the screws we've done, I really don't see any wear on here. So for what it's worth, you probably would wanna keep a couple of those around if you were gonna have this one, um, but it doesn't seem to be something that would be replaced too, too often. The next would be the depth of drive here. Uh, this is a great system on here. You push this red button and then you spin this wheel and it has a really nice, easy to read indicator on the side. Um, you can make very fast adjustments. It's probably the best depth of drive indicator I've seen on really any um, nail gun, screw gun, anything. So um, love that. The other thing we're gonna look at here is the belt clip. This belt clip runs parallel to the handle as opposed to the DeWalt, which is tilted slightly forward. Um, I prefer the tilted one. It's not a big deal. This worked fine. Um, it's very sturdy. It looks like it can be switched from side to side. And that's really it. Overall, this, this was a fantastic tool, very smooth. Uh, we probably put maybe 500 screws in at, at most. It's probably less than that. Uh, and we're at three quarters on this battery. So um, battery seems to be great. It's a three amp hour battery. Not sure if they have other ones or not, but great tool. Everybody loved this. Overall, this performed pretty well. Um, the biggest disadvantage to this was the length. It just seems to require a lot more force to get a screw in. It seems that um, it's harder to be consistent as I get more tired with this because I'm having to push harder. Um, it did help to put my hand up on the top, which is how DeWalt recommends using it. I was able to get a little bit more force that way. Um, in terms of depth of drive, we have this knob up here and you push this little lever forward and you can spin this knob. Um, very straightforward, doesn't have quite 
as simple of an indicator as the Senko, but this, this is great. It works totally fine. So you push this down, which lifts this little lever, and then you wiggle the whole thing off, and that's how you access your bit. Um, where it gets a little weird is to remove the actual tip. It has a tool built into here that you slide out, and you put into a small hole in the side here, and you actually use it to leverage this out. Um, and then even once you popped it loose, you have to, we had to use pliers to get it out. Um, but you can replace these tips. In terms of disadvantages, the issue we had going on here uh, was, was ultimately that um, there's not an easy way to clear a jam in here. Um, any jams that we had were my fault. I totally admit that. I'm a novice with these. I would push a little and then it, I wouldn't go all the way and then I'd push again, it would get stuck. But I still feel like there needs to be a way to clear them. This does have, you can push this button here to release this and move it. But once a screw has gotten caught in there, that no longer works. So twice I've had to take these two screws out, remove the side, clear it with a pair of pliers and put it back together. But it feels like one of the screws is starting to, to slip a little. And everything's plastic, so I would worry that with a lot of extended use, that could be a problem. The other nice option here is you can push this, you can remove it partially, and then you can actually rotate this to really any angle that you want, and then it will snap back on at that angle. So um, we didn't really need that, but uh, if you were working in a tight quarters or something like that, I could see where that would be an advantage. Um, so it's a little, a little finicky, a little tight at first, but once it gets all together, it seems to be working fine. So ultimately, we like both of these, but our favorite was the Senko. It's just a very smooth, easy to use gun, and we really felt like um, it was the one we were reaching for the most. Um, it was more consistent, and just ergonomically, it worked a little bit better for us. But that being said, both of these are great, and depending on how you're using it, you might want one over the other. If you were doing a lot of drywall, the Senko would definitely be the best choice. If you're just doing this occasionally, the Simpson system was, was great. So um, overall, both great tools, and they made us more efficient out here. That's what we're all about. Um, anytime we can have someone uh, able to do other jobs because they finish something first is great. We just want to send a huge shout out to Nailgun Depot for arranging this tool test for us with Senco and with Simpson and arranging for them to send us these tools today. Um, these are gonna help us be more efficient in the field and help more animals as time goes on. So we can't thank you enough for your support and we look forward to showing you guys more tools in the future.